My next guest knows what you're thinking. How could a 12-year-old girl endure a bizarre and despicable kidnapping, an ordeal that included her being uh, married to her captor in Mexico before being rescued and brought back to her family, only to be kidnapped a second time by the same man? That man was Robert Birchtold, who met his victim, Jan Broberg, in 1972, 50 years ago, through the Mormon Church. He befriended both of Jan's parents, Marianne and Bob Broberg, and then he started sexual relationships with both of them, too. Two years later, when Jan was 12, he drugged her and he took her away in an RV. He then told her they'd been abducted by aliens and that if Jan didn't have his baby by the time she was 16, Jan's sister would go blind and her father would be killed. The pair was eventually found in Mexico and Jan was brought home. And because he used the sexual relationships with Jan's parents to blackmail them, they dropped the charges and he only spent 45 days in prison. And then he moved away. But Jan was still in the grips of that alien story. And at 14, she disappeared again. And again, it was Birch told. This time he took her to Pasadena, Florida, California, and he enrolled her in a Catholic school under a fake name, somehow convincing the nuns that he was a CIA agent. Four months later, she escaped, and again, her captor escaped a serious penalty. Just six months in an institution. Years later, Jen wrote a book with her mother, prompting other victims of Birch Toll to come forward, but he ultimately took his own life. A documentary on Netflix called Abducted in Plain Sight led a lot of viewers to blame Jan's parents for what happened, and Jan wanted to correct the record. So she's now behind a mini-series on the Peacock Network called A Friend of the Family, and Jan Broger, Broberg joins me now live. Jan, thanks for being here. I still am so mystified by how this man was able to do so much horrible uh, to your, you and your family. Well, I think that a lot of times people don't really understand the extent that a perpetrator will go to to groom the entire family so that they can target and, and then prey upon the victim that they intend to perpetrate upon. And I think that's one of the messages that I really hope comes through in the scripted series on Peacock, A Friend of the Family, that people will see how grooming happens, not just to the victim, but to the entire family and orbit around the child. So I, I'm so curious about how your parents, because I know you're very sensitive about how the documentary, you know, really sullied your parents' reputation and, and how you feel they're very much victims of, of this, you know, predator as well. How long did it take uh, for you all to kind of figure that out, you and your mom and your dad, and, and put the pieces together and hopefully, you know, get counseling as to why you had to go through everything that you did, even though you were just 12 and 14? You know, it's, it's, I was one of the lucky ones in a way because I had a wonderful childhood up until the moment that this man strapped me to a bed and kidnapped me and took me to Mexico. Those first 12 years of my life were spent like riding our bikes and doing all the things kids do. And he was like a favorite uncle and his wife, I, we learned how to cook and do ceramics from him. His kids and us were all best friends. We never had any reason to suspect that something horrible like this was going to happen. So I had a lot to build back my life on, the foundation of those first 12 years, wonderful parents who had loved me, accepted everything that I ever needed to say to them. They took it. They never tried to defend themselves. They said, we didn't know. We're so sorry. We love you. That's how. So I know that right now on Netflix, the, um, the Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, you know, series is gangbusters. Everybody's watching it. And, and it's really traumatized the, the, the victim's family members. They say that they didn't even know this thing was coming. They had, you know, no say in it at all. And the, yours is different. Yours is very much you. I mean, you're involved. You're a producer. You were on set. Did you feel any re-traumatization by, by making the series the um, A Friend of the Family? Or do you feel by being a part of it, it was actually therapeutic? Definitely therapeutic, and I really wanted to do it right. And I'm so very grateful to the executive uh, producing team, to NBC Universal and Peacock for all of the involvement that I did have, because it's so hard to tell a story in a short period of time, like, like the documentary tried, but it's all headlines, right? You don't get to see the normalcy around how 
these groomers operate, and they do because the most common kind of abuse is by someone that you know, that you love, that you trust, someone in your family, your congregation, your neighborhood, your school, your sports team. And so to have a say in how it was told so it was truthful from my perspective was incredibly mm. important to me, and, and they got mm. it right. So good. It is a friend of the family. It's on the Peacock Network. Um, and also, by the way, I know you have a lot of fans because this show is doing really well. If you want to see more about Jan, she's got a podcast. It's called uh, The Jan Broberg Show. And then your newest book as well is called The Jan Broberg Story, The True Crime Story of a Young Girl Abducted. Jan, thanks so much for being on. I really appreciate it. And uh, congratulations for, for working yourself through all of this and being the person that you are Thank now. Thank you. I appreciate it. I've started nice a foundation. Come and join our own online community. <laughs> All right. Jan Broberg uh, joining us live tonight. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.